Hi everyone, today I will be reviewing the NECA cartoon Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles April O'Neil vs Bashed Foot Soldier 2 pack. Let's take a quick look at the box, this is the front. Top we have the Turtles logo, bottom we have the NECA credits. On the side we have Foot Soldier artwork. On the back more artwork of the two characters plus the general description of the NECA series. More artwork of April. So let's get it open. And here they are out of the box. You can see the figures and the accessories held nicely on the plastic tray with tape and wire. And here they are out of the packaging and let's go through their accessories. First up we have the hamster statue accessory which is specific to an episode. You can see that it's got nice sculpting for the fur on its chest. Very cute arms and legs as well as the ears and eyes. As well as a little tail on the bottom. Next up we have the pizza monster also from a specific episode. Nicely sculpted and sharply painted eyes and teeth. You can even see the little fingers and toes on this guy. He stands nicely on his own but you can also decide to support him on his tail as well. And then you see more texturing on his back down the tail. Next up is April's turtle communicator with turtle shell sculpting on the top as well as panel lining. Flipping it over to the bottom, there's also more sculpting as well as panel lining. The communicator is shaped like a powder compact and opens up as so. You can see even more sculpting of the buttons and, and painting for the screen and the lining as well. Really nicely detailed. And of course April holds it nicely in her open palmed hands to give turtles a call. And I figured I could stick the turtle communicator into her loop like so. She comes with two gripping hands that hold the rest of the accessories for her news reporting. A shoulder slung recorder that's also nicely painted and sculpted to show the rolls and the reels. Attached to a channel 6 microphone. And here she's got the recorder nicely slung on her shoulder and holding the microphone. She also comes with another cordless microphone painted exactly the same way with channel 6 logo. And finally a very nicely sculpted and painted camera recorder with a viewfinder, a screen on the back, channel 6 logo and articulated handle for easy um, holding of the camera, the lens and the adjustment, as well as the Channel 6 logo on the other side. The adjustable handle helps in getting into a good pose to show her filming nicely. Just be careful when you're working with these small parts in the handle as well as her fingers. And of course you can always get other characters to film her doing an interview. So now we move on to the scalp and I will talk about the literally the biggest issue that I have with this figure is that her head looks a little too big for her body and the resemblance to all the cartoon and artwork as you can see on the package and the other reference pictures. She has a varied resemblance to the various moments of her in the cartoon depending on the angle and the artist. Her face cap also appears a bit bloated from the prototype that Nika showed at toy fairs and conventions. So I'm a little bit disappointed that what was shown in the conventions, which I thought was really well executed, could not be brought over into the production toy. However, because this is a cartoon version, I can appreciate that she looks a little bit more cutesy and she does match with some of the reference art from some angles. So while this is the biggest issue for me, I'm actually okay to look past it. Your mileage may vary. I'm still really pleased about the sharp applications of her lipstick and her eyes on the face sculpt, as well as the extremely sharp eyebrows and the lines in her hair that really bring out the texture and flesh out the sort of volume that we would expect of an 80s hairstyle. Moving closer to her neck, you can also see the very nicely drawn lines for her collarbones as well. Her yellow jumpsuit is also covered in paint as well as shading for all her details like collars, her pockets, lining and sculpted belt details, white paint on the belt, very nicely sculpted sleeves as well with the wrinkles in the clothing. The very nice detail that they added was also her wristwatch that is painted in white with a yellow face and you can also move it on her wrist just to display it differently. On the back, she's got her notebook hanging from her belt loop, as well as a back pocket. Moving down to her legs, you can see a nicely sculpted and very sharply painted loop over here, as well as the cargo pockets. And more lining down the front just to add interesting detail to an otherwise plain yellow jumpsuit. Onto her white boots, you can also see there's also a painted detail for the zip, as well as interesting grey shading on the back. Onto articulation, she's got a ball jointed head that can tilt sideways, look up, as well as down. Spin around, swivel hinge shoulders that go all the way up and around, as well as out this far. The bicep swivel that's cut into the sleeve over here, double jointed elbows that get you a good range. Another swivel on her forearm, as well as a swivel hinge on her wrist. While articulating her, you can see the paint is coming off at the joints, but they are casted in yellow and flesh tone plastic, so that shouldn't be a big issue. Ball jointed torso that can get you a forward bend, backward bend, sideways tilt as well as the swivel 
Swivel hinge hips that get you forward and back split that much, only slightly hindered by the soft material in the jumpsuit, as well as the sideways split. She does have a thigh swivel that gets you that much range outward, as well as inward. Double jointed knees with a really tight upper joint. Ankle tilt down and up, as well as generous outward and inward tilt. There would have been an opportunity to integrate a calf swivel just where the jumpsuit meets the boots. However, this is one whole solid piece cast in yellow plastic. So just be careful when you're articulating the ankles. As you can see, there's a bit of white paint rub over here exposing the yellow plastic below. And with her excellent possibility and accessories, you can get her looking like the all-action, multitasking reporter that she is. Even though she has small feet, you can still get her into pretty nice poses as well. Onto the foot soldier accessories, he's got the gripping hands as well as the karate chop hands that we have seen before and a set of splayed hands that I believe are new with this set. And of course you can swap out those splayed hands for some gesticulating. He comes with a standard foot clan rifle that we have seen before as well as the same foot communicator with Bebop on the screen this time as compared to the previous communicator where we had Shredder on it. He also comes with two painted throwing stars, one neon orange and one grey and he holds them well in both his hands. I like this new rifle best because it's covered in shades of blues and greys as well as the nice detail on the barrel, the rifle grip, the vents and the charging handle. The most eye-catching detail is the fine yellow line on the barrel and it's equally well painted and detailed on both sides. And of course he holds the rifle nicely in his hands with the new splayed hand as well. And there's an option for the bigger baddies like Bebop to borrow the rifle as well. And he looks really good on them. Going over the paint and scout with the foot soldier, I will bring in the old one for comparison. So the old ones on the left and the new ones on the right. The main difference is of course the newly sculpted torso that we will take a closer look in a moment. He's got one less painted line on his chest piece, but has added black line detail on his belt. On the back more of the same except an extra added line detail over here on, on the top of his back. Taking a closer look at his torso, obviously he's got a bashed battle damage section. And you can see the yellow wires very nicely painted and sculpted inside, as well as a blue center central core unit and a flexible piece of yellow wire over here that you can move around as well. Overall very nicely sculpted and painted with all the various details, especially the tattered uh, clothing. And of course adds very much appreciated detail and pop to the foot soldier army that you're building. Moving on to articulation, he's got the same as other foot soldiers, a ball jointed hit, left and right, up, down, all around, swivel hinge shoulders that go all around and go out that far, upper bicep swivel. Double jointed elbows for great range, swivel hinge at the wrist, 360 swivel at the waist, swivel hinge hips that go forward and back that much, not hindered by the skirt, outward split that much, back swivel that goes out and in, double jointed knees with great range, mid calf swivel, ball jointed angles that go down, up, in and out, and finally a toe hinge. So as expected you can get great poses out of him even using the toe articulation over here. Now for size comparisons, April stands at 14 and a half centimeters or five and three quarter inches, while the foot soldier stands at six and a half inches or just under 17 centimeters. Here they are with, with the turtles, Shredder, Krang and other foot soldier, Bebo and Rocksteady, as well as Slash and Ladder hit from the same wave. And finally with some standard Marvel Legends. First of all, let me say this is a nice set, but let me go through some of the negatives. People's head scout came out a little too big and looks quite different from what the initial prototypes that NECA showed off at toy conventions. The likeness to the cartoons are hit and miss because the cartoons themselves were also inconsistent in the way she looked back in the 80s. So your mileage may vary at this part. For me, I can still accept that her face scout is still beautifully executed with sharp paint applications. They really bring out her character as an all-action inquisitive reporter. I still think the head scout by itself, without any reference to the cartoons or the initial toy prototype. Looks beautiful and could pass for a cartoon April O'Neil. The next thing is her size. She definitely appears a little smaller on the scale side. Case in point right here, comparing her again with Donatello and Mary Jane, which is a standard size Marvel Legends female action figure. But given the fact that she's still taller than the turtles, I can look past this size issue. I will say though that, that she's given very good and nicely painted accessories that really bring out her reporter character. Coupled with the fact that Neka managed to make her jumpsuit look interesting even though it was just plain yellow in the cartoons, by adding very sharp panel lining and interesting details like the pockets 
and making the overall yellow colour really pop in hand together with the bright and distinct white boots. The Foot Soldier itself is a basic sculpt that Nika has already gotten right two waves ago. I enjoy the articulation on it. It's very expressive for the cartoon Foot Soldier that we all know. Plus now it's gotten an interesting battle damage with distinct internal parts and bright yellow wires to add some variation to the Foot Soldier army. Overall, I like all the accessories that come along with this set. And despite a couple of issues with April, I will still recommend you to get this set because we have to complete the cartoon team of the Turtles and April. And I'm really looking forward to Nika finally doing a cartoon splinter. Please give me a like, comment and subscribe and also check out my Instagram profile in the description below. And lastly, do stay tuned because I will be reviewing the KC and Foot Soldier 2-pack in a couple of days. Thanks for watching, take care and stay safe.